and welcome back to the Look Fantastic YouTube channel. Tomorrow it is International Women's Day, so we thought we would kick off our brand new series. So make sure to subscribe as we have many special guests coming on this series, and make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy the first episode. Now our first guest is a really successful social media influencer and a female founder of a really popular tanning brand. It's Lottie Tomlinson. How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Good, I'm really well, thank you. So for people that might not know you very well, do you want to give us a little bit of a background story about how you developed your career and how you got to where you are today? So basically when I was 16, I didn't get into sick form and my brother was on tour at the time and I really wanted to do hair and makeup. So my mum sent me on tour with Lou Teasdale who was doing the boys hair and makeup at the time. And I did a works work experience and I was literally 15. I, I was just turning 16 actually on that trip. And then I spent a week there and I was like so nervous, so shy. And then Lou ended up quite liking me. So she was like, "Let's why don't you stay for the next three weeks? Because um, there's three weeks left of that tour. So I stayed for the next three weeks. And then we had a little break. And then they were doing a full world tour. Um, so I went on that full world tour for two years and just learned everything. Got really, I got, got good insight into the industry. And then once I came off the tour, I was nearly 18. And I had all these followers and then Instagram had started becoming quite big and influencing. So then I kind of just fell into it and um, now I'm here five years later doing, still doing it. So obviously you started out as being a makeup artist. Yeah. What made you go down the tanning route rather than developing a makeup line or going down the skincare route? I think I've always loved makeup and skincare, but at the time so many people were coming out with these makeup brands and I think it was it's quite a hard thing to nail. And I'd always been interested in tan as well. And I was a little bit more passionate about creating a tan because I'd never been able to find one that worked for me because it'd always break me out and I couldn't, I always had tanning disasters. So yeah, I was kind of more interested in coming up with a product that was really good and worked for me and that would hopefully help people in the same position as me where they couldn't find a tan that would work for them. Before we had any of the face tan drops, I just used to put like the mousse on my face and it would make me break out so much because I've got blemish prone skin. So I'm so glad yeah. that people like you have now brought out these face tan drops because I could not live without them. It's so good because you can add them into your skincare, you can add it into your makeup and it just gives yeah, you that sure. lovely glow without actually having to wear loads of fake tan or break out your skin. So if you weren't a social media influencer and you didn't own your own tanning brand what would you love to do for your career i think i'd just be a makeup artist because i was always so passionate about makeup from being so young and that's how i kind of started i went on tour to learn makeup and that was really my goal was to become a makeup artist so i think i'd just be a normal makeup artist and obviously from working at a very young age and yeah. learning that you've got to work to be able to have a good career that's obviously got you to where you are today and now you're only 22 yeah. and you've got your own brand which is absolutely incredible thank you so you're obviously such a huge influence to many young girls do you ever feel a pressure that comes with having such a large following yeah i think it's always on your mind kind of what you're posting and making sure you're not setting the wrong examples and stuff like that and obviously everything you do post is getting judged so much and everything that you do so I think it definitely plays on my mind but if anything it kind of makes me a better person because I have to make sure I'm doing the right thing so that I'm advising people to do the right thing so it kind of helps me in a lot of ways. Yeah, I completely understand that there yeah. would be such a large pressure with that as you are only human, you are an everyday girl like all of us. And people yeah. forget that we are all human, we all make mistakes, not everyone is perfect. Yeah, so true. I think you just have to realise that you're never gonna please everyone and there's always, like along the way, you've kind of just, everything, every mistake I've made has kind of been there for people to see, which hasn't been easy, but that's what comes with the job. <laughs> So we would love to know what you're currently working on and as a brand where would you see yourself in the next five years? So I think obviously with Covid we've not been able to travel and do all our trips so I think there'll be a lot more trips and um, we're going to obviously scale the brand up. We're launching in different countries and we'll be able to do the trips that we were meant to do this year and yeah I think just growing our product range, getting more people involved and just learning about the industry a bit more and yeah. Yeah, that'd be so exciting. I can't wait to get away yeah. and go on holiday. So obviously we're living in difficult times at the moment with COVID. How has that affected you personally or how has that affected you as a brand? 
yeah so it's kind of just affected us in terms of the fact that you can't travel and obviously the shops have been closed so that's a big part of our sales is in the stores which has been tricky but we've just kind of had to push the online retail side of the business and it's been quite nice to be able to sit stay at home and create content and give people ways to tan at home and make themselves feel better during lockdown which has been quite nice um but yeah i'm excited i'm excited to be able to travel again and go back to launching in different retailers across the world what advice would you give to people to stay motivated during lockdown i think having a routine is really important so like i always wake up and kind of do the same routine and also working out has been a massive one for me i didn't really work out that much before but since being in lockdown obviously you've got so much time and you can kind of learn what workouts that you like and what suit you so starting the day, the day with a workout is like a game changer for me if i don't start the day with a workout now i don't feel like i'm anywhere near as productive in the day yeah i think in the first lockdown i did start doing yoga and things mm -hmm. and then i just stopped doing it so i need to start getting back into that again because i feel like i was in such a better mental state yeah doing a bit of exercise than not doing anything it's just good because it just sets like the, your day right and also it's not even that you need to do a big workout sometimes i'll just do like a 10 minute stretch and you're just kind of getting your brain working and your body moving it's quite it's quite a good way to start your day off so what is one beauty product you could not live without which isn't tan related oh um probably a good moisturizer because i think it's so important if you're not wearing makeup if you're wearing makeup uh, to have a good moisturiser and I love the Ole Hendrickson, is it the Banana Bright? Their products are really, really nice. I think a good moisturiser is just going to keep your skin nice and smooth. Yeah, it's an essential. I've definitely not worn makeup throughout basically the whole of lockdown. This is the first time I've put makeup on in a long while and I almost forgot how to do yeah, it. So crazy. yeah, I definitely think having a really good moisturiser in your skincare regime, it yeah. just really helps to give you that sort of nice glow and keep really healthy, especially in the winter months because it's been so cold. So sure. keeping your skin hydrated has definitely been a really important one for me as well. And what is one tanning product that you could not live without? think it would have to be my self tan drops just because they're so versatile and so easy to use and obviously they go hand in hand with a good moisturiser so obviously with with not wearing as much makeup in lockdown I'll always still put a few drops in my moisturiser like every other day and it just leaves me with like a nice base without having to wear makeup so you already look like you're kind of it's like semi-permanent makeup in a way and also they don't break you out we're dermatologically tested so that's such a big one for me because I've never been able to to use a tan on my face that's not broke me out. So I think I won't be able to live without them. And you can use them on your body as well, which is perfect. Yeah, I love how versatile they are. I absolutely love the face tanning drops. I could not live without them. I wear them every single day because um, I'm really pale naturally. So I definitely need to have some tan to make me feel better. That's, a, that's another good thing about the drops as well because we've got light, medium, dark. I think they're really good for like fairer skin and like first time tanners because you can use the light and just add a couple of drops and you're only going to get a really subtle colour but it's nice because some people don't want that really deep tan so yeah it's also a great one to take on holiday as well because i don't like staying out yeah. in the sun if you're only going for like a weekend and you don't take a big luggage with you and you can only take 100 mil it's so much easier than taking yeah. like a big bottle of fake tan with you exactly. so i think they're really good for that yeah I always have them in my um, in my carry on as well. Sometimes I'll put them on on the plane, so when I land, I've already already got a bit of colour. <laughs> So obviously tomorrow is International Women's Day. So what does International Women's Day mean to you? I think it's just representing how strong and independent and powerful women are, and just celebrating that, and also marking how times have changed. Obviously, things are so different for women now with the rights and kind of everything else so it's really nice to be able to celebrate women and have a day just dedicated to them yeah i definitely think it shouldn't just be one day it should definitely be the whole month no. <laughs> for yeah, the whole year I agree. just all about women I agree. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah we, deserve it. we do deserve it 100 percent. so what kind of advice would you give to young girls who are wanting to start a career either in the beauty industry or if they wanted to go down the social influencer route what kind of advice would you give to them I think just being true to yourself because it's so easy to think right I want to be an influencer so I'm going to pull up some pages of the influencers I like and just try and copy that and then I might get somewhere. I think the people who you look at who have actually done really well are just people who are really authentic and have been themselves and 
even if that goes against kind of the trends or what everyone else is doing that really shows through and I think that's the best way to kind of make it is being yourself and then having like a you know what I mean and it uh what's the word like um original kind of do you know what I mean a vibe and a and a way a way to post yeah yeah I think that's really great advice is especially Instagram it's become very oversaturated everyone wants to become an influencer yeah. so if you're just copying off someone else then you're not going to get seen as much I think people um, start following you based off your personality. So yeah, I definitely think being authentic and original That's definitely what's going to help grow your following and also if you've got a great personality yeah, then people so are going to want to come back for more Always be yourself So you come across as being a very confident person What advice would you give to people to become more confident or to overcome their insecurities? I think it's took me quite a long time to get where I am and I'm definitely not fully confident. I think that's another thing that really shows with Instagram, like I can come across as really confident because of my posts and stuff like that, but that's sometimes a bit of a shield for people and behind the camera they can feel quite insecure and still have insecurities. But I think one of the biggest ways I've kind of overcome that recently is just trying to remind myself that everyone's different. There's no two person that's the same and that's what makes people special so there's no point trying to compare yourself to anyone or trying to be something you're not because how you are is why you're special and and that's why you are who you are yeah i think it's really important to normalize the fact that not everyone is confident a lot of people portray their perfect lives on social media and you may come across as being super confident on there so so that was just my observation but yeah actually getting to know someone as a person they might not be as confident as we are just looking at images so it's a lot easier to come across as confident on images than it is in person so yeah I think it's really important to show people that maybe you aren't so confident and, and maybe that'll help others as well to gain more confidence. It's so funny because I, I could look at a girl and think oh my god I love her hair and then you could speak to the girl and that she'd be so insecure about her hair or the thing that you sometimes look at that you're jealous of they don't even like about themselves so yeah it, it it is true like everyone has insecurities and you're not always as confident as you look on instagram so obviously working in social media i've seen firsthand that people can be quite horrible with their comments do you ever respond back or do you just ignore those kind of people and comments well i think for one i've always been quite lucky because i've got such a solid like follower base and and the people that follow me and comment on me regularly are all so nice and have always been so supportive. But obviously, I still get the, the bad comments sometimes, but just not interacting with it has always been how I've dealt with it. There's no point trying to fight back or reply. The best thing to do is just delete the comment and move on and, and don't let it get to you, which is easier said than done. Obviously, I've been in this position for years now, so I've had a lot of time to develop a thick skin, but I think also you've just got to remember that that person must be struggling in their own life and must not be happy to to be portraying that out to the world or to someone so you kind of have to feel a bit sorry for the person that's feeling the need to make them kind of comments <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna move on to some quick fire questions from some of Lottie's followers and some of our customers. So let's get on with the quick fire questions. What's your favorite perfume? YSL Black Opium. What is your favorite cosmetics brand? Bare Minerals. What have you been missing the most? My family. Who is your favorite music artist? Um, Khalid. What is your favorite thing about being an influencer? Um, getting to travel. Favorite movie? Um, this is England. Dream job when you were a kid? Uh, being a midwife. Biggest fear? Uh, getting old. How many tattoos do you have? Oh, um, I think seven. Are you a vegan? No. How old were you when you had your first kiss? Um, 13. <laughs> Favourite colour? Um, pink. Favourite brand you have collaborated with? Oh, um, Revolve. Favourite ice cream? Mint chocolate chip. Favourite food? Sushi. Favourite animal? Uh, monkey. <laughs> Who is your biggest inspiration? My mum. Would you ever go on a reality TV show? Probably not, but never say never. Thank you so much Lottie for answering all of our questions today. Thank you so much for coming on our YouTube channel. We really hope to see you very, very soon and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you for having me. Don't forget to subscribe to the Look Fantastic YouTube channel and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked our first episode. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you very soon. Bye. Thank you, bye.